All right, welcome to another episode. In this episode, I'm going to be discussing the new release of my book, The Decoy Book. I'm super pumped about that project. If you listen to the Jerry Bradshaw interview with me, uh, he was kind enough to have me in his podcast. Uh, this was about a month ago now. But he was kind enough to have me in his podcast. And we talked about dog training and we also talked towards the end uh, about my book about this particular project now i have three books now so uh, i do have a couple of books more on the pet owner and dog trainer side this one particular book is more geared towards protection training so this book is just and i'm not saying this just to pat myself on the back this book is unique it's one of a kind uh now don't worry this episode is not a sales pitch okay uh i am going to be giving you some information here from the book and i'm going to be doing this throughout more episodes uh I, i'm one person that just loves to share uh this is something i told jerry on that interview i just love i love to share i love to uh i love to share my knowledge um, the stuff that I have worked so hard to to learn, uh, I want people to know those things. So I did that with uh, with this book. Now my experience in protection training with working dogs has been pretty pretty decent. You know, I've been working with dogs for twelve years now, and the bulk of it has been with working dogs. A lot of it has been with with working dogs and protection training more specifically. And recently, I just got into sports. So in that book, I talk about the things that I learned. I talk about things like, you know, uh, terminology. I talk about, um, you know, the handler, how to deal with the handler. I talk about, um, you know, the difference between the, uh, you know, the sports and uh, military working dogs, police work, police dogs, because there is there is a difference there. So I talk about that. I talk about some of the injuries that you might have, uh, some of the injuries to to watch out for. Uh, I talk about fear, complacency, which is a huge thing in any industry. Anything you do, complacency is always there to want to creep up on you and and mess you up. You know, I have had those moments where I have gotten complacent. So I I talk about that in the book. And so I have a lot of things, a lot of good information on there. But, you know, I'm just one person. And I wanted this book to be something that if I was back, you know, if I was new at this, I wanted I wanted to have a book that I could give to that person that that I could I have this in the book too, you know, it's something that if I could go back in time to me, you know, when I was first getting started, I could hand this book to that guy and go, hey, listen, dude, read this book. Now, this book has some really good information on here for you, but it's also a combination of a bunch of other interviews from people who are really good, you know, world renowned of what they do too. So I put all of that together in this book. And I truly believe it's a unique book. It's just, it's not just me. I'm not saying that the other protection books are bad, by the way. You know, those books are excellent. I have read a bunch of those too. Um there are some good there's some good material out there. But this one is it's unique because it's it's not just me telling giving you my take on things. It's also, you know, people like Jerry Bradshaw, Dave Croyer. Tom Rose, Bart Ballone, and uh, and a bunch of other helpers. And if you look at all the helpers that I interview, just combined experience, it's it's well over a hundred years. Okay, so think about this, right? Some of the people that I have here is uh, first of all, I have my chiropractor. My chiropractor has had over twenty years working. On athletes, but specifically, he's also he has also worked with protection helpers. So he has been seeing, you know, him and his son have been seeing protection helpers for the past twenty years. So 
in that interview, I talked to them about injury prevention. We talked about some of the things that they see with the helpers. We talked about uh, we talked about supplements. So a bunch of things. On top of that, I also secure some interviews with Jerry Bradshaw, Bart and Michael Ballone as well. They were kind enough to give me their time. All of these guys were awesome, kind enough to give me their time. Dave Croyer, Ludovic Turbain, Franco Angelini, who is more of a military working dog and police dog helper. Jeff Riccio, who's a, he's a uh, PSA deco. Tom Rose, big, big name in, uh, in Schutzen. Uh, Sean Thankachin, a PSA decoy, and he also does French ring decoying. Uh, Josh Kirby, big, big name in PSA helper work. Stefan Van Minsel, he is a guy who, he's a Mondial ring decoy, but he's also been a, a Belgian ring decoy. He's been decoying for a very long time. Uh, Daryl Ritchie, big name also in PSA, has been doing PSA since since the beginning of PSA. He's a PSA judge. He also has been a PSA decoy for a very long time. Jessica Van Pola, who is a who is a uh, an IGP decoy. Koi Fam. Big big name in Dallas in PSA. Uh, his club has had a, a bunch of uh, different um, a bunch of different handlers that have gotten high high levels in PSA. Now his interview was kind of brief, so I didn't actually have a a full interview with Coy, but some of his answers from his interview are in the book. So right there, all of these people we have. You know, well over a hundred years of experience right there. Uh, that's why this book is just something I'm really pumped about. You know, and like I said earlier, I like to share. I like to have this out there. I I do like that. You know, that I've got to finish this. This thing, this thing was like homework. It was like writing a, a long ass freaking paper. And uh, you know, on top of my other things, on top of my job, on top of. Uh, you know my 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 daily life. I had to find a lot of time to squeeze in this project. A lot of late nights, so I put in a lot of work into this project, and I'm just finally happy that it's out there to help other people out. You know, it and it really does help me if you buy the book. What I'm gonna do though, uh, I do like to share. Uh, this is something that I said a few moments ago. I do love to share, so. I am going to be making like a, an audio slash video file of this book that I will upload to YouTube. And I'm going to do this in one of a couple of ways, so one of a few ways. I'm either going to make one long ass just video, which I'm probably not going to do, honestly. I did that with my um, Info Every Dog Trainer shit. Now, if you go to my YouTube channel, uh, I have the audio summary of that, and it was a very long. It's a very long video. It's a very long file. Um, but I'm I, I'm gonna do something like that with this book too. I'm going to either make a bunch of videos, or I'm gonna make a few long videos where I'm gonna be talking about all the information that I have in this book. So that for whatever reason you are unable to uh, get the book wherever you are, or you are unable to afford the book. Uh, I am going to make it available so that really anybody who wants this piece of information can get it. You know, YouTube, it's a free sharing website. Uh, you know, you, you can find a lot of information on there. My channel, my YouTube channel has hundreds and hundreds of videos, a lot of informational stuff on there. And it will also be containing the contents of this book also in audio video and with each episode that I put here on the podcast I'm also going to have episodes in which I am going to be talking about contents of the book uh, because I want to I want to share I want this information to reach as many people as possible and I don't want there to be you know any excuse if if you can buy the book 
I really appreciate it and it really helps me out. It really validates all of my effort. Um, but if for whatever reason you're not able to, just hang tight, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and you know you will have the information on there as well. And also, stay tuned with the podcast. I am going to be uploading a bunch of stuff here too. So let's go now into contents of the book. Okay, the sell pitch is over. The sales pitch is over. Now I'm going to go right into it. So let me give you a little bit on the first part of the book. Now, I'm going to briefly give you the introduction here. I'm not going to read this word by word. Don't worry. But here's the thing when it comes to when it comes to helper work. People really, really love watching working dogs we all do if you see a protection dog it's freaking amazing you know you see uh you know you see the dog uh, being under a lot of control biting especially when it outs when it releases on cue and it does some really nice fancy stuff you know like guarding or uh escorting it's really really cool and it is a true testament of that dog of that of that individual of the temperament and the genetics of that dog but it also is it's also a a great reflection of that handler's training so it it does show you that trainer's hard work too but the one thing that a lot of times gets overlooked like jerry bracho said in that interview you know, the unsung heroes, which are the the decoys, the helpers. And that's the thing that a lot of times, you know, we don't pay attention to, we don't realize. I have a protection club. You know, I have a, a couple of people that, that decoy with me. I have one guy, um, Isaac, who helps me out with decoy and he's an awesome guy, uh, very helpful and really good decoy too. And so... When he, uh, you know, when him and I decoy, it's just, it might seem like we're just going through the motions, but everything we do for our club members, we're we're giving it 100%. We, you know, we criticize ourselves. We're looking at this as, okay, how could we be better for the next session? I certainly do. And I know, I know Isaac does too. And, uh, you know, we really, we we really put our, our hard work into it and we, sacrifice our joints you know that's how it is the the helpers are our joints are the workhorse of our craft so when uh you know when i see a nice impressive dog yes kudos to the dog kudos to the handler amazing training but i'm also thinking in the background i'm also thinking and the helpers right the helpers that that got this dog to that point too uh, and that's what this book is about. This book is about those people. This book is about the people that are that are sacrificing their joints, that are you know having club for like very sometimes it's a pretty thankless job. You know, like I don't do it for the money. Sometimes, I mean, I do have club fees. People do pay to be in my club, and um, and sometimes people think that they're my customers and so as my customers they deserve certain things but they're not my customers right if, if they were my customers i would be charging them a hell of a lot more but they are paying for club fees and the club fees compared to the amount that goes into it you know like the the achy joints the chiropractor visits the the insurance for the club you know the fact that I'm uh the fact that I I carry the risk when you count all of those things when you factor all of those things the club fees you know might be kind of a hassle for some of these handlers but it barely covers the main necessities of the club and so you know I don't do it for the money a lot of helpers that that run their clubs you know some of the people I've talked to you know I'm like hey how much do you charge and uh, and some of them charge more than others. And you know, this also depends on their location. 
But uh, some of the really good helpers that I've talked to, they they bear, they hardly charge enough to cover the basics. They're you know they're really not getting paid. Um, but we don't do this for for the we don't we don't do this to make a lot of money. If we did, we'd be charging a hell of a lot more. We have our other sources of income to to uh, you know for for our needs. We have our other sources of income to pay the bills and the food. Like to me, I can speak for myself at least. When I do club, I do it because I enjoy it. You know, I enjoy the learning process and I enjoy watching the progression. And I do this for my members. And I also do it for me because I have a dog that I'm competing with. So having members allows me to have a setting where I can practice certain things with my dog. And so there's a lot of love and a lot of passion that goes into this craft. And that's that's why this book was written. It was written for the helper in all stages. You know, if you're a helper, maybe if you're not even a helper, if you're not even a decoy, and you're waiting to just get started, this book is is definitely going to help you out. It's going to show you how to get started. If you're intermediate, definitely going to help you out. Even if you're advanced, it's going to help you out. And um, And so that's who the book was written for. So now let's go into some of the terminology here. So decoy slash helper, they're the same thing. When you hear decoy and you hear the term helper, they're really interchangeable things. Some people are kind of snobby about the term decoy. Um, You know, it does sound pretty cheap, decoy, um, or you could be a helper. But essentially, they're the same thing. A decoy slash helper is the person that is taking the bite now, you could be a training helper, a training decoy. Now, you're not just taking the bite. You're actually developing the dog. So whenever you hear the term helper slash decoy, they mean the same thing. They're very interchangeable things. You also have trials. Now, a trial, if you're a sport person, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If maybe you're not into sports, a trial is an event that has been sanctioned by the organization that sponsors that sport. So for instance, in PSA, a trial is an event that has been organized uh, and sanctioned by Protection Sports Association, right? The, uh, the organization. And so when we have a PSA trial, we have an official judge who has been trained and certified to be a judge and has competed in the level threes You have decoys that have been selected through a certification process and they have proven to be proficient in the sport and in the scenarios to represent the sport in a trial. So there's a lot that goes into a trial. A trial is a very organized event. It's a lot of of stuff that goes into putting a trial together. Now in this trials, what happens is we have the official judge the steward who's helping the judge. We have the decoys and we have the participants. We have the handlers that are putting in to compete in this trial so that they can show their dogs and hopefully advance, get a qualifying score in advance. Now, the the training takes place way ahead of time. And then by the time they show up to the trial, they're now showcasing their training. Right? And the judge is going to deduct points according to what the judge sees fit as something that needs to be improved. But hopefully after some of these deductions, the handler gets a qualifying score and then they move on to the next level or they complete one of their legs so that they can progress to the other levels. Now the decoys that are at these events these are certified decoys like I mentioned a moment ago. Now, the job of this decoy, this trial decoys, is to test the dogs. So in a trial, the decoys are not helping the dog. The decoy is not friends with the dog or the handler when it comes to the trial. Like All the assistance, all the help stops the moment you step into that trial field. Now, you're there to show your dog show your training, the judge is going to tell you pretty much how prepared you are, and the decoy, the decoys are going to pick at your dog's weakness 
and also showcase your dog's strengths. So that's the job of the trial decoy. It's not to be your friend, not to give your dog a good bite, but to represent the sport by performing each outlined scenario to the best of their ability. And the purpose of these scenarios is to test the courage, the strength, the power, and the training of each dog. That's what a trial decoy is. So a trial deco has to be very knowledgeable in their sport. Uh, they should be athletic because, you know, let's say in a trial you have, let's say you have 10 teams that, you're, that you are decoying for. Your performance has to be the same with all of those teams. You can't start super strong and then fizzle out by the 10th dog. You have to be consistent with your performance as a decoy. So there should definitely be some level of fitness there, which I talk about in the book, which I'm going to cover at a a later episode. But that's what a decoy is. That's what a decoy does. And and sometimes the trial decoy is not popular. (laughs) I've seen this, uh, you know, I've heard the talking and it's just how it is. You know, the trial decoy sometimes is not the popular guy because if the dog doesn't do well, a lot of times people are very tempted to go, well, you know, my dog normally does fine. So I wonder, you know, what happened here? Maybe the deco jammed the dog or maybe the deco just, you know, maybe the deco just stepped on the dog or maybe the deco just, you know, didn't present fast enough or well enough. All of these things happen. And now the one thing that I will say is each deco brings in their own personality. And so me as a decoy and somebody else as a decoy, we could do the same scenario, but each of our personalities are going to be different in in those scenarios. So that also plays a big part into the performance of the dog and also the performance of the decoy. So maybe maybe one decoy has a lot of presence and will really challenge your dog. And maybe a decoy at a different trial doesn't have a lot of presence and doesn't challenge the dog quite as much. This is why uh, there are teams, and I know, I've heard them. I've I've heard these teams sometimes go, all right, who's going to be the decoy at this trial? And they go, yeah, I'm not going to that trial. Because they know that certain decoys have a lot of presence and they would rather have their dog on somebody else. And it's the same thing with judges. I've also heard the same thing. Who's going to be judging at this trial? And you're like, oh, no, 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 I don't want that judge. Maybe, maybe I'll go to another trial. Wait for another trial till you know I see another judge. So some of these things do happen. Uh, you know, we're not robots. The judges are not robots. They're not programmed to do it the exact same way. But as close as as close as we possibly can, of course. You know, decoy same thing. We're not robots. You can't just set us up at a certain level. We all have our own personality. We all have something different that we bring to the table. So all of these things go into play, which makes trials very interesting because every trial is going to be different. Even if you have a trial at the same location and it's a two-day trial, even if you have the same setup, one trial could be slightly different from the previous day or from the next day. But anyway, that's pretty much the whole thing with decoys and, um, and a little bit about the book. Like I said, stay tuned for more episodes where I'm going to be talking more about this book. And also, if you haven't if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, go ahead and do that now. That way you can see updates and videos on the book. I am going to be getting my copies uh, next week. So once I get them, I'll get to work and I'll start putting out this content uh, for free on my YouTube channel you'll get to actually get way more information on there. So between buying the book, owning the book, and watching the videos, it's going to be really, really awesome information out there. So I'll see you on the next episode.